When building back an application, one of the most critical things uh, to identify is what kind of workload is your back end application use? And and basically there are two types. Is it is your back end mainly I/O bound? That means is it mostly relying on uh, you know I/O that whether that is to desk or network, or is it more you know CPU heavy? It needs the precious CPU time for effective execution you know and and this comes down to scaling because how do you actually scale your backend application and when i say say a scale i mean like vertical scaling like how much juice if you will resources do i need for one box so that my application runs efficiently and it doesn't die and i spend as as little amount of money as possible so that you can kick in the latter part of things where you can scale, you know, uh, horizontally. So in this video, I try to explore the two types of workload, I.O. bound. I'm going to show you an example uh, using Postgres because it is an I.O. bound app. And I'm going to show you another uh, app that I wrote in C that is essentially CPU bound. It, it sucks all the CPU out of your machine. And you can use that with this beautiful top command, which is available in every Linux machine. Let's jump into it. All right, so now I'm looking at the top command, which you can literally execute by, by running the command top. I know there is like another command called htop, which is like a little bit prettier, but top will give you all your processes, all the CPUs, how much memory is each using, but I'm really interested in this line, essentially. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna explain that. And even in that line, I'm really interested in this guy, and this guy and this guy right the rest maybe are more relevant for you know system you know engineers or hardware engineers is more it's more appropriate for these parameters all right so let's get started in explaining the different type of cpu metrics that we have here right so the first metric is this, which stands for US or user processes. This is a percentage of all the cores, right, in your machine of how much uh, CPU usage user processes have used. So this is also a percentage, right? so 0.1%. And I've seen this different, depends on the app you're using, so top, will show this as a percentage from zero to a hundred. Zero means you're not using anything. Hundred means you're using hundred percent of all cores, right? So if you see this as a hundred percent and you have like four core machine, like in my Raspberry Pi, that means uh, you're using hundred percent on the first core, hundred percent on the second, and the hundred percent on the third and so on. So that's critical. Sometimes, like HTOP, I think, if I'm not mistaken, will show you that as 400%, which is, to be honest, it's, it's like nicer, right? Not nicer view. Like, so you see 400% means, oh, you're using 400% of, you, you have four cores and all of them are essentially occupied, right? So that's the first one, user. The second portion here is the system. So this is how much time all the cores, again, the CPU has spent on system operations, right? So that's the, when, when you swip, swipe from user mode to kernel mode, and you start executing system calls, the kernel needs the CPU as well. But that is a different metric. We count that such that we don't pollute your percentage. We tell you that, hey, the kernel used this much. So if, if you see this uh, using higher, uh, amount i don't know what to do you need a kernel developer to start <laughs> debugging that stuff right so it means there is somewhere inefficiency in the kernel that we're using or maybe you're doing a lot of system calls perhaps so yeah so that's that's what it is essentially uh ni or nice um uh, this one to be honest i don't have a lot of it you know examples for it but it seems like you can tag a uh, processes with a specific priorities and these are called for some reason nice right 
values and anything above above zero is an will be counted here as its own percentages so maybe you have like a specific process with certain affinity right and you can assign certain affinity for processes and this will increment that counter so that it gives you like a nice specific custom percentage of cpu usage for that id which stands for idle this is how much time we stayed idle essentially so at this moment we're looking at top we are 99.7 percent idle on my raspberry pi i'm not using any almost no cpu right so that's it and then this is the one of the important one that we need to talk about is which is weight this is all right the percentage of cpu time that is spent waiting the cpu is actually waiting for an io specifically from disk this does not count network io as far as, as I'm, I'm, when i say network i don't mean uh, i mean uh, socket tcp or udp you know socket it does not count as that if you send if you send a request in http and your cpu is just waiting that doesn't increment that at all right this only get incremented when you're like the cpu is making a file read to disk or if that disk is mounted to like a network mounted device that network is just you know uh, that cost is just eaten as if you're doing a file disk io right so what does that mean this is essentially a way to distinguish idleness because technically it's the cpu while this is waiting doesn't mean it's blocked the kernel can technically switch another process to to uh, to do other tasks on it right so it is it is technically idle but we want to identify the the idleness such that this particular cpu has issued an io and it's waiting for an, a result before it can continue other things so that time until we get the io back that counter essentially stops right so and i think if i'm not mistaken the counter always gets increments like if you see a cpu idle which is this case like the kernel of this sees a cpu is idle or a core is idle and it just has issued an io then it starts incrementing this time or this counter essentially right? the higher the value here th that means your disk io is is slow right essentially and i'm gonna demonstrate this with postgres because this raspberry pi has an emmc you know uh drive or card i suppose it's not really a drive right? and and that is really slow i'm gonna issue a lot of rights and you can see that the cpu is 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 just waiting most of its time spent waiting for io bound workloads right so so that's essentially that's what it's doing if you if you see that in that area then if you see that value high that means your disk reads are slow essentially or maybe you're issuing so ma so many reads right maybe you can do like a little bit more efficient in your io right to disk and that becomes like are you building a database or building a like something in that in that regard right all right so hi high hardware interrupts the cpu has spent some time servicing hardware interrupts like i suppose a keyboard a mouse is a hardware interrupt right there's software interrupt as well i suppose this is the software interrupt the service interrupt routines right and there's the st which is the steel and this is essentially if you are in a virtual environment uh, you have multiple operating systems right sharing that cores that you have and what will happen in this case like the core the cpus will be stolen from one process from process to another right and when it's being stolen for to execute other things this counter gets increased right but what we're really interested in is really the weight and idle and the user right so you can easily know that you if you're uh cpu bond or 
IO bound, right? In this particular case, IO bound to disk, right? How about we jump into it and do some examples? All right, with that out of the way, now that we know this, how about we try our first workload, which is uh, doing a CPU bound workload, right? So I'm going to go here and I have a, a basically a, a C program here. Very simple that just literally loops bazillion times and then just creates a sound, right? So if I run this program, it's going to stay running, but that is absolutely almost using the CPU all the time. Yeah, there is like uh, trips to the memory, of course, to, to set the variable, the local variable that is the sum. But you can see that now there is a program called a.out, and it is using some part of the CPU, right? It's using 100% of one core of the CPU because it's a single threaded uh, process right so we're using 25 percent makes sense because uh, this is a four core raspberry pi right so you can see that now we are jumping to 50 percent something happened right other other processes got kicked postgres is interfering but we're we're averaging 25 percent which is nice now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna kill this process and uh, before we do that, see the idle time is around 75%, right? So it's like almost like a full sum game here. So I'm going to kill that process. And uh, you can see we're back to normal, right? So we're no longer CPU bound. No. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start running the processes, essentially a multi-process of the same job, of the same process. I'm going to spin up multiple processes on the background. So we spin up process number 38. 39 and 4 should essentially max out my CPU and as we can see now my CPU is fully maxed out 99.8 user space you know the user processes and there is no idle time and you can see that all of these guys are fully fully using the CPU now guys what I want to talk about here is for a brief second is while true we have we have we're seeing 100 percent of cpu it doesn't tell us that other processes has been waiting for cpu time it doesn't tell us that metric unfortunately that metric is missing right while you can technically you can have a hundred percent or maybe 98 percent let's say utilization of your cpu and you'll be absolutely fine no processes are starving for cpu time right for but so just seeing 100 percent or 98 doesn't mean i am lacking cpu and i need to add more cpus not that's not always the case for that you actually need another parameter that is not available here as i was saying 100 percent cpu or let's say 98 percent doesn't always mean other processes are starving right to actually see the starving or stalling processes you need something called uh, performing stall information or PSI in Linux. It's an extension or or an add-in. It's a, called an add-in. Something you enable in Linux. You enable it in Linux and that will show you, hey, these processes are, are stalling. You do not want stalling processes because that's when you're doing context switches left and right. You are starving other processes and you don't want to do that. And that's actually how you can, you know, figure out how many threads, right? How, how much can you push your backend? How many threads can I, you know, kind of spin up before my backend is fully saturated, like almost fully saturated? Because again, you want to stay efficient. And by efficient means I want to use everything that I have to for maximal, uh, you know, effectiveness, right? Back to the screen. All right, so now let's kill this dash F. All right. All right, we killed all the four processes. Nice. We're back to normal-ish, right? 
good stuff now let's do an io process you guys right i'm gonna do an io process all right so now i have logged into my postgres instance on this pi i'm gonna do the most io bound that it is i'm gonna start and insert a workload that inserts like i don't know a, a billion rows right because because um, i'm gonna talk a lot so i don't want to I want it. I don't want it to finish because I want to see what's happening to the CPU. Meanwhile, so let's do an insert into test. There's a table I have called test uh, from no select star from generate series and the one yeah whatever. It's gonna take a while, but while it's taking a while, let's take a look at what's happening here now, guys. See, there's some CPUs being taken. 20% goes back, up and down. But look at this guy. This is what we want. If you ever see this guy stuck at 50, 40%, then whatever workload you're running is probably I.O. bound, right? That means most of the operation is being... Uh, the CPU is barely doing any work. Writing to disk or and just waiting for the result and and this guy essentially this is a uh, the the pi is using an emmc right? it's type of a storage and that is not really um that's how do i say it's not really fast per se right so you can see this goes up to 24 and it depends on the operations that i'm doing it, it can i've seen this go up to 80 percent to be honest right and it it really depends like what are we doing on the background process so like when postgres writes all this stuff it actually writes it right so if i even if i cancel this operation right well postgres will try to cancel it but that the data that you wrote is not gonna go away right because it's still there but then subsequent processes will start to now kick in to clean up right the auto vacuum will start to kick in there's another process called check pointer will start to kick in so the more we wait the more this goes up essentially because you're going to do more and more ios so let's do that one more time right and you can see that watch watch that go up again right you can see postgres does use the cpu right efficiently in certain operations but most of the time and we can't really tell here what is what is what post what process is actually that but there is tricks we can play i suppose we can do that in another window right while this runs how about we do this grip postgres anything that's possible there you go that's what i want to do so now we have more details of what what is these things now we can see this there's the check pointer there's the background writer and i talked about this in another video guys where i talk about all the processes in postgres and what are what does each one do so we have uh you know we're up to 50 percent nice nice so we're wait we have a wait events and cpu 50 percent of the cpu that is the entire cpu so two cores fully just waiting on io yeah we're still running this operation there there's a postgres i want to take this guy right two six was that was that it two six one four two right and we'll tell us two six one four two is actually the postgres and it tells oh my god it tells you even what is it doing i think this is the background uh this is the back end process itself that's the process that you that postgres spins up for each connection and it's actually that's what it's doing right so this is not a system process that's doing it. that's the back end user process right but yeah that's what i wanted to explain actually essentially guys right so we talked about the cpu bound every time you see this as a you know closing to the high percentage that means your your application is essentially uh cpu bound if you see this guy go high that means your application is mostly doing io and rarely using the cpu are actually waiting for cpu time right so uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one goodbye